Hi, and welcome to DAP Ministries TV show. Uh, of course, we know that Pastor Willie Williams is the host, and he is not here today, but the show, as I say, must go on. I'm Pastor D.K. Smith, otherwise known as Reverend Darrell K. Smith, and I am your co-host, a uh, host for today. And we do thank uh, God for Pastor Willie Williams, and we thank God for DAP Ministries. Now, if you're just joining us, you have to have the understanding what DAP is. D-A-P, Delinquent Alternative Program Ministries. And this broadcast has been on for a while, I mean, before Katrina's time. And so I, I came on around about after Katrina. So, uh, again, we thank God for this opportunity to host the show for today. And as we look back on time and as we look back on the things that have transpired, uh, we can look and say that we've come from a mighty long way. And if anything, that's what we'll look at for today, how we've come from a mighty long way. Now, again, like I said, if you're watching in your home, whether it's in your living room, as Pastor Williams would say, your dining room, your kitchen, even your bathroom, uh, wherever, your bedroom, however you're viewing this show, we thank you for joining us. And as I like to always say, if you joining us in the digital world, whether on your phone, on your tablet, on your laptop, or whatever device that you could get online, remind you that you could also uh, check it out online as well as the um, television cable service. So again, we say welcome to you. And I guess I was thinking um, earlier about what I said as far as we've come from a long way. And not only from DAP Ministries TV show, we've come from a long way, but we've come from a long way even in life. Oh, that's a heavy subject right there. How we've come from a long way even in life. Well, we know and realize that a lot of things are going on in the world today. We know that there's uh, conflict and some people say conflict, some people say wars or whatever like that, but there's uh, things going on like that. And of course, we still are within the realms of the COVID-19 pandemic. It is not an endemic yet, but we can say that the numbers have gone down sustainably. And so again, we thank God for that opportunity for those numbers to go down. However, uh, we still have a long way to go. And yeah, yeah, think about that. We've come a long way, and we have a long way to go. Mm. It's been over two years, almost three years, if you can say it like that, uh, two and a half years that we've had to deal with COVID-19. And of course, uh, we've come from wearing masks, for some of us wearing gloves, uh, social distancing, uh, working at home, uh, going to school remotely, doing things online. Uh, so we've come from a long way, but we still have a long way to go. We still uh, must adhere to certain mandates that are given. Now, of course, the mask mandates have been uh, lifted up in certain cities, in certain states, and the CDC said it's okay to uh, take off the mask. And of course, we know here in the city of New Orleans, mask mandate has been lifted. However, when it comes to public transportation, keep your mask on. Yeah. Public transportation, whether it's the local transportation, or whether it's in the airlines, uh, however you tra train, however you're traveling, if you're still within the public range in that confined compartment, you must wear a mask. I have a confession to make. I wore my mask today. Yeah. I wore it because I had to take public transportation uh, to get here to the TV station. On a personal note, and it's not so much a um, sad thing, I have no transportation as of now. I hope that you all would pray for me that transportation would come my way. Amen? Amen from my mouth to God's ears. But that don't stop me from doing what I have to do. When I attend church and I can't catch a ride, I can walk. 
it's maybe like a 10, 15 minute walk to go to my church. Oh, give a shout out to my church. Zion Travel Second Missionary Baptist Church, located at 3719 Laurel Street. Reverend Eric Layton is the pastor. And we have our Sunday school at 9 a.m. Church service begins at 10.30 a.m. And all are welcome. So we say you're welcome, welcome, welcome. Again, we thank God for the True Love Missionary Baptist Church as well, Pastor Willie Williams. And his church is 2710 Phillip Street. So we thank God for him. His service begins at 8 a.m. Now, getting back to the transportation part. Just because I didn't have a way to get here, I had to get here. So yes, I took the bus here. But while taking the bus, I still had to wear my mask. So again, what did I say? We've come a long way, but we still have a long way to go. We've come a long way whereby uh, we still should adhere to social distancing. Uh, some things, you know, not everyone has been vaccinated. And of course, uh, not everyone has been vaccinated, boosted, whatever like that. But the majority of the people, and I, I won't say for the United States, I can say, but uh, for, the, for that matter, the city of New Orleans, the majority of people have been vaccinated. So, hey, thumbs up for you who have been vaccinated. But don't let that stop you as well. Uh, I think now the, the CDC, or the um, uh, people have announced that you can get that second booster. Uh, for those who haven't had the first one, this will be the second one, <laughs> but you can get that second booster shot. Those 50, I believe 65 or, or older, if you have a, um, and if you're 50 and older, have a medical condition that allows you to say, hey, you can get that second boost if you got that first one and everything. So what is the thing again? We've come from a long way, but we've got a long way to go. Yeah, as I even think about it, you know what's out now? It's festival season, yeah. Strawberry Festival, Pontitula, give a plug out for them. Crawfish Festival, Gumbo Fest coming up. All the other music festivals that's coming up and everything. Yeah, everybody's coming out to enjoy themselves. Again, we must come out in a, uh, I won't say positive, but in a thought-provoking way. In other words, do the right thing in the right way. And that includes continuing the uh, sanitizing, keeping your hands. And, you know, we just came through uh, Mardi Gras uh, season, and thank God that it wasn't as bad as two years ago when it seemed like Mardi Gras was a super spreader. A lot of people all confined. And this was uh, Mardi Gras 2020, right before it. COVID-19 was announced. And so a lot of people were here. And so next thing you know, super spreader and things happen. Oh, yeah, another thing that's coming up is the Final Four. That's going to be here for college basketball that's um, taking place in the city. So, yes, we've come a long way. And, yes, we still have a long way to go. So what, what does that bring us now? Well, that brings us to, a, I guess you could say, not necessarily a pause, but a pause to think, to reflect. And I like to use the word to ponder or understand where we are. Yeah. To think and to ponder where we are and to have that understanding that um, we have come a long way. And we have a long way to go. Yes, I'm emphasizing that. Why? Because the fact that a lot of people may let their guards down, saying, "Hey, I don't have to do this. I don't have to do that. I don't have to. I don't have to wash my hands. I don't have to um, wear a mask. I don't have to do this. I don't have to do that." That may be true, but you still must remember that we are not out the pandemic. They have not announced an endemic, which means an end of the pandemic. So let us continue to uh, do due do, do diligence, do the right thing, and have a better understanding of uh, what's going on in the world and in the city. 
So having said that, let us also remember that um, uh, certain things that we must be aware of and certain things that we must keep in mind. But again, uh, we've got something to look forward to. Yeah, we've come from a long way. We've got a long way to go. But we have something to look forward to. And what is that, you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. We have uh, come to, we've, we look forward to uh, an end of this pandemic. Amen. But think about it like this. We have the vaccine that's working for the pandemic, but think about all the other vaccines that we do. The flu vaccine, you know, we take that yearly. No complaints about that unless you want to catch the flu. And I must I have a confession to make. I was not one of those who would get the flu shot every year. Mm, I'm confessing that. I did not get the flu shot because, oh, I don't want nothing in me that's going to make me sick. <laughs> that was the understanding that I had about the flu shot. But now, when something as far as knowledge, wisdom, and understanding came in mind, uh, came to my mind, I don't mind saying that, yes, I'll get the flu shot every year and every time that it's available. Because if you think about it, we do things, uh, we have things at our veil that's to help us, not to hurt us. You got to think, scripturally speaking, the Bible says that uh, there will come a time, and I'm going to go speak Two different times, okay? Old Testament, New Testament. Old Testament, when they said, and I believe it's Isaiah that says, turn your plows into spears and your uh, and your staffs and the other thing into, into weapons. In other words, make your tools into weapons because there's a time for war. And New Testament, it says, Take your weapons and make them into tools. Take your plows and your, and your shears and, and make them into tools. And that's what we have for us today. An opportunity to take those things that was destroying you and make it something to cultivate you. There's a difference between a tool and a weapon. Oh, let's get deeper than that. There's a difference between a tool and a toy. Yeah. I think I'm going to hit on that a little bit because we have to have a very good understanding on um, what's available and what's available to us. So I'm just going to give you a little tease on that. And that tease meaning the fact that knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and the difference between toy and a tool. Got a whole, <laughs> we've got uh, to take a break, but in the meantime, I want you to think on those things as we'll be back with that ministry TV show. Thank you. Poor nutrition today will increase Sarah's chances of anemia, add to her health care costs, sick days, even stunt her ability to learn. And the thing is, Sarah's not even born yet. Get proper nutrition before it's too late. Call or visit WIC. WIC provides nutrition information, health care referrals, even food. Your child has you, and you have